All right, here's a video of how I repack a brand new Zippo lighters insert. So it's a brand new one, um, never been used. So what you start out with is taking out the screw. And we're just gonna pop out a little flint. This has been my favorite Zippo repair tools, just a paper clip that is bent up like this. Um, you can use it to open up the flint screw. Um, you can pop out the felt. Um, so there's the felt and you're gonna get a bunch of rayon balls and you can dig them out with this. Um, so got some, you and those pliers will go quick. There's still all the wicks all the way down there. All bunched up in the top. <clears throat> so the reason I'm taking all that out is because I heard that these aren't, the rayon balls that come with it aren't the most absorbent and don't work the best. And look at this. A twisted mess of a wick. So get rid of that. Um, straighten this out and set that aside. Okay, so we got our empty insert. And best thing I've heard is to use cotton bacon prime. The prime absorbs 33% uh, faster than um, the normal cotton bacon v2 so uh, try to get that if you can they come in these strips um, for a whole insert you're going to need one and a partial uh, strip so what I do is I kind of straighten that out a bit and kind of make it the diameter of what an insert would be like and this one doesn't matter as much. So, taking some scissors, cut this in half. And take about a third of your partial one. So, hopefully you guys can see this. Uh, the partial, you're going to use your little paper clip. And this is, the partial is going to go behind the flint tube. I'm going to actually pull that apart into two bits. Stuff that in there. I'm not looking at the camera, I'm just looking at the insert over the camera, so... Hopefully everything's in focus and doing well. But there, it's all nice and packed on the side. Um, should be good. Okay, take your wick. I like to look at whatever end is less frayed. And that's going to be the part up there. So our flint tube is going to be right here. So I like to line it up about the top of the chimney and then I do kind of bend it in an S pattern and you don't want to go all the way to the end because the flint tubes there so um, just stop it kind of early and so that's gonna be the ideal wick positioning and the copper wire is going to hold in position. See how it goes all the way to the top of the chimney and it fills and reaches as much of the insert as you can and goes all the way down to the bottom. It doesn't touch any of the sides. So there's not going to be any kinking, no dead spots. Everything's going to be 100% covered in cotton. So one of the coolest tricks I learned is to just take some old... Uh, like packaging and cut them up into these little 
clear plastic flexible strips. Um, and we'll use that to feed everything in. So take the wick and kind of like to suck on the end a little to make it nice and smooth. And we're gonna feed it in through the top of the chimney hole. Usually there's only a little teeny piece sticking out that you can grab. I guess not again. Not yet. Okay. So that went in. So it's just gonna it's gonna be loose in there, but her wick's still in the same positioning and everything. And we're going to take one of our plastic things and put it on one side of the wick, flip it over, let gravity take it down, and then take our other one. And so right now, our wick is sandwiched in between those two plastic um, little pieces. And taking our half strip of cotton bacon prime, going to stuff it in on one side of the plastic barrier and that fits in just perfectly okay and our wick still sandwiched in between there and we're gonna flip it over and put our other piece on this other side this one's gonna be a little bit harder because it's starting to get pretty full Again, this tool is really great for working on these inserts. Okay, so right now we got cotton bacon behind the flint wheel, flint tube, cotton there, cotton there, and our wick still in the S pattern, sandwiched in between these two plastic things. So you take one out at a time. And pull that out and you pull that out and so the wick is a hundred percent covered by cotton and it's sandwiched in between them it has the best wicking ability no kinks nice smooth everything's perfect okay so next you kind of See our wick got a bit frayed, so I like to just kind of brush it up, kind of bring a, make it not so frayed, but I like my wicks a little frayed because it gives kind of a wider flame. And then I like to put it kind of in the center, just right up straight and it's perfect by the flint wheel. Cool, we're almost done. And what I also like to do is to get an extra flint and leave it under the felt. So pop that out. And what I do is I put it right behind the flint tube. Um, I feel like that when you put in the felt, it's going to be the most secured. Even if you put it on this side, when you're lifting it up and filling, it might fall out or something. But it's really secure back there. And if you ever need a spare flint, it's back there and ready. You just take out the... You're going to have to take out the flint spring anyway to replace your flint. So you just take that out, take out your felt, and there's a perfect good spare flint right there. So I'm going to... Push down our felt into there. Put that in. Screw that down by hand. Some people put their flint in there. I like to leave that open so I can use my tool and pry that open. Um, and I, I always just leave my tool rubber banded onto the my bottle of fluid. Oh, I 
distracted talking to you, I forgot to put in our flint. So here's the flint that it came with. Look at which end has been struck already and put that one in first. Okay, we're perfect. So all that's good and don't think we're missing anything. So we're going to fill her up. This is how I fill it up. Lift that up. Hold it up. And what some people do is you can flip down the cam arm, put it into your case, and then use the lid to actually hold it up. So then you can just do it one-handed operated. Um, so our cotton's 100% dry right now. Give it nice, good soaking for a couple seconds. And you wait and let it soak in. Gravity's taking it down. Still looks dry. Fill it up again. A couple more seconds. Let it sit, absorb. Once more. Sit and absorb. Each time it looks totally saturated and it's like it's done, but then if you wait a couple seconds, it dries out again. Starting to get there. Kind of looks like when it's done, it kind of looks like slush. Um, like when you're, like the slush you'd find on the side of the road after uh, the snow's melting and stuff. Okay, now it looks nice and wet and saturated, doesn't look dry. Um, we're waiting a couple seconds and it's not drying anymore, so it looks pretty full. And usually, yeah, the felt looks kind of wet too, so I think we overfilled it a bit, but it's going to get totally getting it full. Our wick actually looks a little bit saturated too, so it's gotten all the way down there. All right, last tip. Uh, it's called the sandwich bag trick, and you just have your square sandwich bag, and you cut out one of the sides, um, and what this is going to do is it's going to kind of create a seal around the felt, and it's also going to protect your insert from when it's going in and out, in and out, from getting scratched. So it kind of prolongs the life of that finish. And it also creates kind of a tighter seal for your insert. So it doesn't like when you open it open, open, it's not going to write up. It's in there pretty good. Uh, but you just take it out and it's there again. So. That's really going to help preserve the life and prevent evaporation, and it's just a really good trick to do. So, got a lot of extra fluid on here. All right, so first time lighting it up, and it works great. So that is how I uh, do my inserts, and hopefully you learned a new trick, and let me know what you'd like to do for yours. Maybe you'll teach me something new. Thanks.